All right, so this thing that we just did was we added our Akismet API key. We've added, we've worked with a plugin. This plugin makes our life a little easier. It helps prevent spam. I'm going to talk about a couple of other plugins that are very useful uh, to add to any good uh, website. Uh, one of them is called uh, Jetpack, and this comes straight from straight from um, from from WordPress, the WordPress parent company, which is called Automatic. So here's what we'll do: uh, on your left side over here, under Plugins, we can go to Add New, Add New Plugin. It asks. Uh, popular, newest, whatever. But under search here, let's type jetpack, one word. Single word, jetpack. Jetpack is a suite of um, mini plugins that give you a lot of great capabilities on top of WordPress, which we'll see in a moment. So select search plugins, jetpack, you should see that the first result, hopefully, it says Jetpack by WordPress. It's got 1,458 ratings. If you hover over any of these ratings, you'll see the number of ratings. This is how you can tell if a plugin is good, because I see Jetpack German and Jetpack here. This one's got five stars. Well, why don't we use the five star one? If I look, on the number of ratings, that one has four ratings. So, uh, if you're looking for a plugin for Twitter, let's say, or Pinterest, you can search for Pinterest and see a ton of Pinterest plugins. How do you know what the good ones are? Well, look at the star ratings. And if there's some that have equal number of stars, hover over the stars and see how many ratings were submitted, and then go by that. The more stars with a higher rating, the better. So Jetpack by WordPress. Jetpack is a WordPress plugin that supercharges your self-hosted WordPress site with the awesome uh, cloud power of WordPress.com. For more info, check here. Uh, so what this is saying is, this is very cool. I use it for all my clients. Uh, self-hosted WordPress. This is a term that we haven't really heard too much, but it's gonna we're gonna hear it more. And what this is is basically my, if I've got victorsbakery.com and I installed WordPress there, that's a self-hosted WordPress. I installed WordPress on my own host. That's in contrast with, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in this class, I think very briefly, if you go to wordpress.com, it will allow you to create a brand new site there uh, for free, but the problem is that you'll have the WordPress branding in your address. If you go to WordPress.com, you can create victorsbakery.wordpress.com. That's not self-hosted. That's hosted by WordPress. And the problem there is that it's limited in what you can do. For example, you cannot install any plugins. So we cannot install Akismet. We cannot install Jetpack, Duplicator, the e-commerce plugin that we're going to use in this class eventually. So you can get a free WordPress site and get up and running right now, wordpress.com. But you'll have victorsbakery.wordpress.com, not victorsbakery.com. You want a self-hosted WordPress, and that's via GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostMonster, a ton of them. So that's the term, self-hosted. What this plugin will do is it will connect your self-hosted WordPress with the infrastructure of WordPress.com so that it can give you statistics. How many visits did I have? What were the most used keywords? What's the most popular page? Uh, extra features like being able to publish a blog post and automatically tweet it and Facebook it and Google Plus it, automatically send content to subscribers, um, add the, the feature that if someone visits your site, there's a button that says, tweet this, like it on Facebook, all of this extra stuff. That's what Jetpack does. And what this will do is, we just created 
an Akismet account to give us the API, but actually we created also a WordPress.com account, and we're going to connect that with Jetpack in a moment to get all of these extra capabilities. So let's select here, Install Now. It says, uh, are you sure you want to install? Click OK. It's going to connect to the WordPress plugin directory, download, <coughs> Jetpack, unzip it, install it. Maybe a bit slow because we're all doing it at once, but we'll just wait and we'll get Jetpack. Eventually, it'll say successfully installed the plugin Jetpack version 3.11, and we have to remember to activate it. Remember, Akismet was already there, but we had to activate it. So we can have numerous plugins, and we can activate them as necessary, or deactivate them. So select here Activate Plugin. takes us back to our plugin screen and we've got here Jetpack by WordPress at the bottom uh, brings the power of the WordPress.com cloud to your self-hosted WordPress Jetpack enables you to connect your blog your website to a WordPress.com account to use the powerful features normally only available to WordPress.com users so it used to be this is why I, I would want to get a WordPress.com address because they have a lot of these cool features that were normally not available to anyone else. Eventually they made the um, this plugin to connect your self-hosted with WordPress.com and now you have all of these great features. This has settings. So click on settings. If you select settings, notice it also went up here. You've got a new section. Inside of dashboard, because you have dashboard, posts, media. Inside of dashboard, now you have a new section of Jetpack. So this plugin installed itself additionally into dashboard. Oh, I see Akismet there as well. So Akismet's under dashboard and settings. And Jetpack is inside of dashboard and plugins. Okay, so under settings here, we have all of these extra features. That we can activate. Victor, is this just for self-hosted or when we get on GoDaddy I need this? What I mean by self-hosted is also GoDaddy. I don't mean just because we're using WAMP server. Self-hosted also means once you get this on GoDaddy, you can still use this. Uh, so, can what's you explain it? what some of these are? Yes. Uh, so, I thought there was like a... Okay, you can click on them actually, and then they'll tell you about themselves, but I'll tell you which ones I like. So for example, okay, what's beautiful math? If you click on it, it says, Latex is a powerful markup language for writing complex mathematical equations, formulas, etc. Jetpack combines the power of Latex and the simplicity of WordPress to give you the ultimate in math blogging platform. <coughs> so if you need to write, if you need to write a formula and that it looks like a formula, you can activate this plugin and if you know the Latex language, then you can write that formula. Uh, carousel. This is a way to make cool galleries. So if you've got products that you want to show in an interesting way, we have we have a, a carousel. So 
So the ones that I like are, um, I like a different one besides Carousel. There's another plugin that I like a little better, we'll talk about. I like Contact Form. This is a way for you to quickly uh, create a Contact Me page and then add the Contact Form to it. So what it's going to do is, if you activate it, it's going to add a new button to your editor, a new contact form button, and then you add a contact form. You add a field to person's first name, last name, email, question, what's the question they have, um, what's their budget, uh, what did they hear about us, so any contact form. Uh, I kind of like this one, but it depends on your site. Infinite scroll. Oops. Infinite scroll. If you if you leave your site as a blog, uh, where your front page has your latest blog posts, a current trend is you don't run. You don't get to an end of the page. You get to you, you get to the bottom, and then more posts automatically appear. You get to that end of that batch, and more posts appear. There's no next button. There's no back button. That's a very popular style in Tumblr type of blogs. That uh, if you make a Tumblr account, you start to blog there, and then you just go and scroll and scroll and scroll and find something new. The kids love that. They're always bored. They want more. So you keep scrolling and finding more content. You can turn this one on. Uh, with the infinite scroll module and a supported theme, that's exactly what happens. Uh, instead of the old way of navigating down a page by scrolling and then clicking a link to next page, waiting for a page to refresh, the document model of the web, infinite scroll pulls the next set of posts automatically into view when the reader reaches the bottom, more like an app. So if that's something that would interest you, if you're doing blogs, you might want infinite scroll. Yes? Tumblr is another type of blogging platform. It doesn't have a lot of the features that WordPress has. People want that sometimes because they don't want too many features. They just want to post content. Let me show you an example here. Here's a, here's a silly one. I've got my own Tumblr where I sometimes put pictures and stuff. So all that it is is that I put a picture once in a while. Is that a happy cat? Pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> so how does it connect to your blog on your site? It doesn't. That's part of the limitation of it, that it doesn't... You can put links back to your site, but it's it's not your site. It, it, it's, it, it's Notice it's vncompost.tumblr.com. It exists on their servers. It's not self-hosted. Okay. But their whole infrastructure is there for you to easily add content. And notice I'm pu mostly putting pictures. Okay, so when you Tumblr user use Tumblr, that's it, but they can relate to your site if they want to log on your site. They pretty much stay on Tumblr. If, if someone goes to your Tumblr site, they stay on Tumblr. Okay. And this has got that infinite scroll, so it's just going on and on and on. There's no page one, page two. It's like, what's new? Keep going. I want to find something new. Uh, so a Tumblr is just a... Um, it's another type of blog, but it's a lot more visual. Uh, you can easily put a picture, an animated picture, and sometimes this works for companies. Just put content. So this is the place where I put all of my animated graphics. So did you see one for the animated graphics? Yeah, but it doesn't make your graphics animated automatically. I still make them in Photoshop, and then I put them up here. It's a very visual medium, yeah. You can easily add um, pictures and video and, and sound and stuff. And just um, notice these often then have a link back to my website. So if they want to, they can go to my website. But the, but the demographic and the mentality of Tumblr is people are just bouncing all over the place in Tumblr. Find me a new tum Tumblr blog, look at something new, like it. Re, re, republish it, whatever they call it, and just stay on Tumblr, and find something new. Thank you. These are pretty cool. I haven't seen them in a while. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you got a lot of time on here. 
Well, I haven't put it anything anything there in a year. <laughs> so anyway, um, infinite scroll. Uh, Tumblr and WordPress are some of the more famous blog platforms, but WordPress also has the ability to be much more customizable. Uh, I teach a class on blogging where I talk about both Tumblr and WordPress, compare, contrast, we use them both, we set them up both, we see why might, one might be more useful than the other. Tumblr is great for the demographic of a younger tem demographic. So if you're trying to put out uh, clothing for a younger demographic, Tumblr is great for, for them because then very visual, you put up a picture very quick without much effort, uh, and uh, you could do it on the go, you know, post quickly on your Tumblr blog, WordPress too, but the mentality is, uh, and the demographic is a younger audience. Other things about Jetpack. Mobile theme. By default, your theme might not be very mobile friendly. So you can activate the mobile theme so that it compresses your site down to look good on a, on a smartphone. So there's a good chance that visitors to your site will be using a smartphone. And it's important to provide them with a great reading experience while on a small screen. Jetpack's mobile theme is optimized for small screens. It uses the header image, the background, and widgets from your current theme for a great custom look. So simply yeah, activate you the your site is responsive anyway? You might not. If your site if you know your site is responsive, your theme is responsive, you it's probably set up to properly work on mobile. If your so if your theme not, is not, then it would be a good idea to use mobile theme. This one people people always want this one. Uh, sharing. Uh, I have <clears throat> a product or I have a recipe and I want people to easily then share it on their Facebook so that their friends and family know about it. That's the sharing feature of Jetpack. Share your posts with Twitter, Facebook, and a host of other services. You can configure what services to appear, the icon and text. Some services have additional options to display smart buttons, such as Twitter, which will update the number of times your post has been shared. So that's cool. You look at a post, and at the bottom it'll say tweeted 10 times, liked 7 times. And the ones that work are Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, StumbleUpon, Dig, LinkedIn, Google+, print it or email it. And you can define your own services. This one's new, I hadn't seen it yet, but I like what I see. Uh, site verification. If you're taking, um, if you're taking my uh, SEO class, in there we spent some time verifying our site with the webmaster tools, with Google and with Bing, verifying that we have control of our site. Here, apparently, they've added a brand new site verification feature so that you can easily then con connect your site with Google, with Bing, so that we have, um, so that we have uh, that verification, and we can we can keep track of our traffic and do SEO optimization. So there's a bunch of them. You can go through different sections. Some are deactivated. Not not exactly sure why it's deactivated, but I think it has something to do with with um, We, we have Jetpack installed, and on the left side over here we had settings, and if we look at Jetpack, so there's a, they should call that main, because there's a Jetpack section, and then the main Jetpack, and then settings. If we go to Jetpack here, the main Jetpack screen, it gives you this big preview that tells you, okay, you, we're, you're going to use... Uh, WordPress cloud features. And this, mine currently says Jetpack is in local development mode. Does it say that for you as well? Okay, so I think it knows that it's in WAMP. 
that you're not actually on a server. Once you're actually on victorsbakery.com, there will be a button here that says connect with my WordPress account, which is the one that we just created when we set up a Kismet. So imagine that there's a button that says connect with wordpress.com. I would click it and it would take me back here to log into the account that you created when you created a Kismet. And then it'll connect the two and then it works. And then I think it'll activate all of these other features that are not currently live down here. Like photon and notifications. And what do those go with the commercial? There's, there's actually no commercial version of Jetpack. But with a Kismet, if you didn't buy you didn't upgrade a That's actually separate. If you don't upgrade a Kismet, that's a Kismet's thing. Yeah. But that does not that whatever you pay for a Kismet does not does not affect Jetpack. So it's just that we're we're on WAMP or MAP. We're not live on, on the internet. Once we are live, then we have more of those features. <laughs> and so So uh, we, we can't fully look at every aspect of Jetpack, but I, I uh, recommend you go in here into your settings, read what it's about, turn it on, read the documentation. Each one's a little bit different. Sometimes you get a little icon. Sometimes it's under a different screen. Not too complicated. There's always a help button at the top right. So on Jetpack, there's extensive help that you can look at. This is a plugin that I install for all of my clients. Because once it's fully set up, it'll also give you statistics. It'll give you on the top over here a little chart that at a glance shows you how many hits you've had per month. You click on it and it'll show you much more detail. This week I had 25 hits, 7 on this page and 19 on that page. Uh, last month I had this number of hits and this page was most viewed. And this term was most used when people searched. So it's always good to know what your traffic is like, and Jetpack is a way to, to track that. What are those options on the right side? There's so many types of plugins that you say, only show me the plugins related to photos. Not plugins, but features. I only want to see the features related to, to photos. So it shows me those. There's 34 features that come with Jetpack, and it's a lot to look at. So only show me stuff related to stats. There it is, WordPress stats. But I can't use it until I until I go live. All right. So any other last questions on Jetpack? Yes. Um, is it something? Is it something visible here, or is it elsewhere? Mm. Under site verification. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Um, let me address that a little bit later because that's more of a technical feature of your site. It's related to SEO. So let's talk about it a little bit later. It's more, it's more of a can of worms than I want to get into at the moment. Okay, another plugin I want to talk about, and then we'll be getting close to wrapping things up. Very useful, uh, very powerful, and um, let's, let's check it out. Uh, let's go back to our plugins, add new. And here under search, let's type Yoast. Y O A S T. It's like toast but with a Y. Yoast. So let's search for Yoast. Yoast um, is actually a series of very useful plugins 
my results show WordPress SEO by Yoast, Google Analytics by Yoast, and a couple of other ones. Both of those I recommend, but I'm going to focus on one at the moment. Uh, we'll, know, we're, we'll know that we're looking at the right one because it says it's published by Team Yoast. Anyone can make a plugin. So someone can make a plugin called Amazing, Amazing Yoast Plugin. But that doesn't mean it's from the company Yoast Team or Team Yoast. Make a note that make sure you're getting the one from Team Yoast. So here, WordPress SEO by Yoast, version 1.61, four and a half stars out of 3,485 reviews. Very popular. And the other one is Google Analytics by Yoast, with four and a half stars, 1,370, version 5.06. These two plugins are ones that I recommend uh, for your site. I use them on my clients. I'm going to look at the first one first. Uh, which is WordPress SEO. WordPress already has a lot of great built-in features for SEO, but then this plugin fills in some of the details that WordPress might not cover. Um, so if you select Install Now WordPress SEO by Yoast, let it install. Remember to activate it. Remember to select activate the plugin. Just because it's it installed it didn't mean it's working. You're gonna see in your plugins screen WordPress SEO. There's a frequently asked questions screen that you should read at some point. This plugin, everything that it does that, that we can do with it, uh, the free version works just fine. Then there's a premium version that you pay a little bit for it and you get extra features. And honestly, I usually use the free one. It works just fine for everything that I need, even for my clients. And there's settings and deactivate. Now for myself, did you see a big old red notice right there? A huge SEO issue. Did you see that? Did you sure say that? So here's what's happening. Yoast has analyzed your site and it says there's a huge SEO issue. Well, in this particular case, I'm not going to worry about it because we're running on WAMP. Our, our site is not live on the internet yet, so some things won't work exactly like they do in the real world. If I was seeing that issue in the real world, if I had put my site up on GoDaddy or Bluehost and I saw that, then I would definitely read this how to, to see how to fix that. Basically what it's saying, don't click on it, but what it's saying is we have this turned on. Remember when we first set up WordPress we said don't let the search engines pay attention to my site because I'm not even on a live server. And Yoast is saying, oh don't forget to turn that back on for real when you go to your live site. That's what that's saying. Once we've installed Yoast, now we have a new little section here, SEO. And these are all of the things that I can edit in my site very easily to improve my search engine optimization. The best that I can do is uh, sh sh make you aware of this. Make you aware of this plugin. Ask you to read the documentation. I might show you one or two little quick things about it, but really, you want to take my SEO class where we dive into in detail everything about SEO about this plugin and other things about SEO. That's why I teach a variety of classes that interlock with each other. In this class, we learn how to make a site with WordPress. Part two, we add e-commerce to it. In another class, I talk about in depth about SEO. In another class, I talk in depth about uh, social media, how to get noticed on social media. In another class, I talk in depth about how to work with blogs, how to write effective blogs. All of the classes are free. There's no prerequisites. It's first come, first serve. They happen various times throughout the semester. They all, I designed all the classes that they interlock. 
and they're all recommended. So under the SEO, uh, the under the SEO, um, the Yoast SEO screen, and you go to dashboard. Again, there's all of these things. It's a lot to work with. It can be daunting. There's the um, the, the, the help file that you that you should look at, but right away it's here it's telling me you do not have your post name and your URL of your post. It is highly recommended that you do. Consider setting your permalink structure. Hey, I talked about permalinks at the beginning of the day. That it's not recommended to stay with the default, which is what we have to do because we're on WAMP. But I might have a solution for that a little later. So when we're live on Bluehost, I want to follow its advice here and go to fix it and I'll get better SEO. So that's what this plugin is about, analyzing your site and telling you what you could improve. Because there's plenty of other bakeries out there, there's plenty of other realtors out there, and web designers, and CPAs. How do you get found? How do you get business compared to your competitors? It's all about getting found on search. No one nowadays really gets that gets the yellow pages that they throw on your doorstep and browses it. People put it right away in the recycle or use it in the fireplace. Um, people are search, are searching. People go on Yahoo, on Bing, on Google. They go, they go wherever. They, they search on AOL.com. They search on their mobile device. They ask Siri, what's a good restaurant near here? And you get found via search. So, search engine optimization, and this plugin helps you with that and the class where I focus on it. You're one step above your competitors, however, if you're using one of these plugins. And this is not the only one. There's another one called uh, All in One SEO plugin. I haven't used it enough to compare the two. They all work pretty well, but the other one is called All in One SEO Pack, I think. E1 SEO pack. Yeah, it's a WordPress plugin, all in one SEO pack. They all do just about the same thing help you optimize your site for search. I've used Yoast for years, that's the one I can really vouch for. I have, I have colleagues that use the all in one SEO pack, it works fine for them. The point is, you need one of these to help you optimize your site. Yeah, I do recommend the other one, but again, you're not going to get too far with it because it makes more sense once you take the SEO class. But yes, the other one that I was also mentioning was, if you go, if you search Yoast again, I do also recommend the Google Analytics, but it's not going to do you any good unless you set up a Google Analytics account. In the SEO class, we do. We set up Google Analytics accounts, Bing Webmaster Tools accounts, Google Webmaster Tools accounts, and this will help you connect your site with Google Analytics for more SEO optimization, search engine optimization. So you can install it. You don't have to activate it. You're not going to use it. But at least you have the plugin ready when you get to that point. So, any questions so far? So today we spent, as per my itinerary, we spent the time talking about plugins, these extra features that ex extend WordPress. So we're going to wrap it up very soon, and what I want to do is use the duplicator plugin again. We've done this work of adding plugins and changing settings and such. I don't want to have to do that again next time. I want to resurrect my site again next time like we did at the beginning of the day. And it'll go smoother next time because we will we'll have done it again. And the more we do it, the easier it is. So we did this last week. Let's do it again this week where we want to archive our site using Duplicator. Duplicator is a plugin we installed previously. And you should see if you go back to your plugins, to your installed plugins, no, actually, we don't need to do that. It's down here, Duplicator. 
this is what I'm saying, the plugins install themselves in a variety of ways. Uh, so scroll down and you should see Duplicator. Click on Duplicator. It says there are no packages found. That's fine. It's, uh, that's okay. At the top, let's select Create New Package here. The package is an archive. I use the term interchangeably, which is a, which is which is your site saved completely. Those were that's what those that's what I gave you this morning. Remember, we went to the network folder. You took my folder, which had the installer PHP file and the zip file. Our whole site was in those two files. We're going to do that again right now. So you can take it with you, work on it at home, or when you come back next week, you'll take my work from today. Actually, let me change one thing. Don't worry about this. Just stay at that screen for one moment. All right, so in the duplicator packages screen there under Create New, uh, hopefully you do not see uh, uh, a, a warning or a fail here. It says pass. It means an it analyzed your site and it can make an archive of your site. If there are any issues here, it'll try to give you some instructions of what to do. What I often see when it fails, or not fails, but it gives you a warning, is that you have too many large files. Let's say you take photos of your products and you upload those photos straight from your digital camera all 15 megapixel glory of every picture. Suddenly your site is very, very, very big. So Duplicator might have a problem compressing everything down because it has to deal with every one of those huge files. And your particular provider, like Bluehost or GoDaddy, might complain that it's taking so long and you get a warning. So that's possibly why you might get a warning. Your files are too big. I don't have any warnings. So here it's saying, uh, okay, we're going to make a brand new package with this name, 2014-09-19, in the name of the site. That's fine. Or you can change this if you want. Whatever. I'm going to leave it. Notes. Just make yourself a note what's in this archive. This is optional, but I'm going to write uh, installed um, Jetpack plugin, installed Yoast plugins, what else did we do? Set up a kismet. Changed um, uh, comment settings. Whatever you want. You don't even have to type this. I'm just showing you. This is where you would write what's in this archive. What did I do here? I often do a duplicator package before I'm going to do any updates. Again, I haven't fully talked about updates. But if I've got WordPress 3.0 and now WordPress 4.0 is out, I'm going to make a duplicator archive before I do that. In case something messes up, I can resurrect my version 3.0. So this duplicator has a variety of purposes. Click Next. It's going to scan the site again. I'm going to check any more possible errors and messages. It tells me here under Archive that every file and page of my site and picture takes up about 41 megabytes. The database itself takes up a little bit less than one megabyte. And at the very bottom, select Build. So it's going to find every picture, every link, every menu item, everything in the database, save it, as it's going to save it as installer.php and that archive file, which actually went down to 15 megabytes, from 40-something to 15. So now you can decide. If you're running my site, if you took my site at the beginning of the day, you're free to take this with you and work on it at home. Or uh, when we start again next week, you can take my site at that point. But let's say you want a copy of this. You want to click the Installer button. 
what will happen is it'll say, would you like to open it or save it? Do not click open. Click save. And what happens is it will save it to your desktop. Installer.php. And then you want to click the archive. And again, click to save it. Don't open it. And it will save the archive to the desktop. These are the two files that you need to take with you. I want to put them in a folder. It didn't put them in a folder for me, so on the desktop I can right-click New Folder and call it uh, WordPress and today's date, 2014-09-19. And then so I can uh, put the files in there and then I'm going to I'm going to take the folder to my USB. I you can't really e email this. This is too large to email usually. But um, those two files that I archived that the duplicator created, I'm going to put them in that folder. And that's the folder you want to take with you. I'm going to put I'm going to put that folder in the network folder in a moment, and that's my site so that when we come back next week, we can use my site or your site. Both the installer and the zip file. Because duplicator right here gave me two files, the installer file and the zip file. Make sure you downloaded them both and then put both of those files in the folder and that's your complete site. And then at the moment I can close my windows and we're gonna wrap it up. We'll have a little bit of lab time. We'll wrap it up at this point. Um, And uh, I'll turn the printer back on in a bit if you want those printouts. That'll be it for today. When we come back next time, as I've got listed here, I'm going to be talking about discussion on hosting providers. I've already covered some of the things. So we'll, uh, we'll be working on more items. But uh, thank you for coming. Make sure you've uh, signed.